Over the past six weeks, you have explored the traits of functional programming as they present themselves in the Scala language. In particular, you've seen higher order functions and how they're composed. You've seen how to represent data with case classes and how to decompose it with pattern matching. You've seen how to work in the absence of mutable state, in particular with immutable collections. And you have seen several evaluation strategies, namely strict evaluation, call by value versus call by name. And you have seen how they can be mixed in flexible ways. I hope you will uh, find that a useful toolkit for your everyday programming. And I also hope that it has shown you a different way of thinking about programs. If you find out more about function programming in Scala, there's actually a wealth of material out there. Uh, there's the Scala cheat sheet, which is actually from a post uh, of a student of a previous course. The cheat sheet shows you the essential elements of the course in a condensed form. Another approach to learning Scala is the Scala School by Twitter. It gives you a lot of courses on uh, the basics of functional programming up to the concurrency libraries that are used in Twitter's massive systems that are all written in Scala. Another fun way to continue your Scala experience and your Scala learning is uh, doing some of the Scala exercises by 47 degrees. So that's a way to learn the individual features of programming by means of solving simple exercises. So for instance, I can come up and have a look at the maps exercises. So here you see essentially first some dis description and this explanation. And then it asks you to essentially fill in the blanks here to say, well, how many pairings does map have here? And it says four. No, that's actually wrong. So three is the right answer here. So it's a fun way to test your knowledge about Scala and also to extend it. If you're more into reading a book, well, the reference book is uh, Programming in Scala, which I co-wrote. It's currently out in second edition. The first edition is actually free download on the web. The second edition is available from the Artima publishers. And finally, there's the Scala website, which contains a lot of documentation from, again, getting started and tutorials to a link to the Scala doc and uh, a general API overview to links to the community and a lot more. So it was quite a tour what you did over the last six weeks. And I believe you learned a lot about function programming, but there are also quite a few topics that we couldn't cover yet. And that would be worthwhile to study in a future course. The first topic would be, well, how do, can we use the principles and the elements that we learned in this course in the design of larger programs? How can we apply functional programming in a larger context? Related to that is the question, what are some useful design principles of functional programming? We know all about design patterns in object-oriented programming languages. So do they carry over to functional programs? Probably not. But then the question is, well, what would be typical functional design principles? Another imp important and interesting question is about the relationship of functional programming and mutable state. So far, all our functions uh, have been pure. Uh, there were no side effects. And uh, that meant we also had very powerful reasoning principles about functional programming that are all rooted in uh, the idea of that substitution model that you have learned. Once we add mutable state, do things change? That's a very important question. And also, if we don't want to add state in a straightforward way, uh, can we maybe simulate state in a purely functional setting? Another important development is from sequential programming, what we have seen in this course, to parallel and distributed systems. I've mentioned at the beginning of this course that functional programming is very suitable for parallel evaluation, but so far all our programs were sequential, no parallelism involved. So once we go parallel, it would be interesting to see what are the data structures, what are the algorithm and programming techniques to do that. And one step beyond parallel programming are distributed systems, in particular distributed collections that it turns out are very, very useful for big data and data science, data analytics. So there's a fascinating set of topics still to be explored, and I hope I can see you back in future classes to do that.